In ancient times, the Kemetu speak of beings who had powers. These beings have always been sought after by the elites to perform grandiose deeds for them. Such is the case of Khufu, the God King, builder of pyramids. In his quest to find a spell of immortality, he hears of a strange old man who has lived longer than anyone and knows the secrets of life and the secrets of the universe, the famous chambers of thought, the veritable keys to other dimensions. These deeds are described in the Westcar Papyrus, and they read as follows. Don't forget to hit the like button and share the video on your social media platforms. These are the incantations that cause the YouTube algorithm to perform the magic of recognition. In this papyrus you will hear of Hordadef, he is the son of the king. You will also hear of Dedi, the magician that Khufu seeks. Ra is the all-powerful sun god of Egypt, often depicted as the sun. Thought is one of the most famous ancient beings in the ancient world. He is said to possess the Philosopher's Stone and knowledge to unlock the secrets of the universe. And the story reads as follows. Then, Prince Hordedef, Jedef Hor, stood up to speak and said, Deed is something known by those who have passed away one cannot distinguish truth from lies. There is someone under your majesty and in your own time who you do not know. His majesty said, What is this, Hordedef, my son? And Hordedef said, There is a commoner named Dedi, who lives in Jed Snefru. He is a villager who is a hundred and ten years old who eats five hundred loaves of bread and a shoulder of beef for meat and drinks a hundred jars of beer a day. He knows how to mend a severed head. He can make a lion walk behind him with a leash on the ground. And he knows the number of chambers in the sanctuary of Thoth. Now, His Majesty King of Upper and Lower Egypt Khufu, justified, spent the day seeking for himself the chambers of the Sanctuary of Thoth in order to make something similar for himself for his horizon, Pyramid. His Majesty said, You yourself, Hordedef my son, shall bring this man to me. Then boats were prepared for Prince Hordedef, and he went southward to Jed Snefru. After the boats had been moored to the riverbank, he traveled over land seated in a litter of ebony with poles of sandalwood plated with gold. When he reached Dedi, his litter was set down and he stood to greet him. He found him lying on a mat at the threshold of his, as a servant at his head anointed him, and another rubbed his feet. Then Prince Hordedef said, Your condition is like that of one who lives before the infirmity of old age, although old age means dying, laying to rest and burial and who sleeps until dawn, free from illness, without an old age of coughing. Greeting, O blessed one. I have come to summon you by order of my father Khufu, justified. You will eat delicacies provided by the king, the food of his companions. He will lead you through a good lifetime and to your ancestors who are in the necropolis. And to this Dedi said, Welcome, welcome, Hordedef, prince who is beloved of his father. May your father Khufu, justified, favor you. May he advance your position amongst the elders. May your spirit contend with your enemy, and may your soul know the road that leads to the gate of him who shelters the dead. Greeting, O Prince. Then Prince Hordedef held out his arms to him and raised him up. The he proceeded with him to the riverbank, giving him his arm. Dedi then said, Let me be given one of the barges so that it may carry for me my children and my books. Then two boats were made available to him together with their crew, and Dedi came northward in the boat in which Prince Hordedef was. After he had reached the royal residence, Prince Hordedef entered to report to His Majesty King of Upper and Lower Egypt Khufu justified. Prince Hordedef said, King, my lord, I have brought Dedi, and His Majesty said, Go and bring him to me. His Majesty then proceeded to the audience hall of the palace, and Dedi was ushered in. Then His Majesty said, Why is it, Dedi, that I have not seen you before? And Dedi said, He who is summoned comes, answered the old man. Summon me, and look, I have come. Then His Majesty said, Is it true that you know how to mend a severed head? And Dedi said, Yes, I know how to king, my lord. Then His Majesty said, Let a prisoner be brought forth who is in prison, and let his sentence be executed. Whereupon Dedi said, but not to a human. 
Doing something like that to the noble flock is not ordained. Then a duck was brought forth and its head was cut off. The duck was placed on the west side of the audience hall and its head on the east side. Deddy spoke magic spell and the duck stood up, waddling and its head likewise. Once the head had reached the body, the duck stood up cackling. Then his majesty had a goose brought to him and same was done with it. His majesty then had a bull to be brought to him and its head was cut off. Then Deddy said his magic spell and the bull stood up behind him, its leash having fallen on the ground. Then King Khufu said, It is said that you know the number of chambers in the sanctuary of Thoth. Deddy answered, I beg your pardon, I do not know their number, but I know where they are kept. And his majesty said, So where? And Deddy said, There is a box of flint in a room called the Inventory in Heliopolis, and it is in that box. And his majesty said, Go and bring it to me. And Deddy said, it is not I who shall bring them to you. And his majesty said, Who will bring it to me? And Deddy said, The eldest of the three kings who are in the womb of Regidet will bring it to you. Then his majesty said, I want it. These things you say, Who is this she, this Regidet? And Deddy said, She is the wife of a priest of Ra, Lord of Sakbu, who is pregnant with three sons of Ra, Lord of Sakbu. He has said this of them. They will perform this ministerial position, rule, in the whole of this land, the eldest will become chief priest at Heliopolis. And his majesty fell into a bad mood on hearing this. Then Deddy said, What is this mood, king, my lord? Was it caused by these children I mentioned? First your son, and then his son, but then one of them. Then his majesty said, When will Regidet give birth? And Deddy said, on the fifteenth day of the first month of Peret, the season of growing. Then his majesty said, But that is when the sandbanks of Two Fish Canal are are cut off. Might I visit myself so that I could see the temple of Ra, Lord of Sakbu? And Deddy said, Then I will let four cubits of water appear on the sandbanks of Two Fish Canal. And his majesty proceeded to his palace. Then his majesty said, Have Deddy assigned to the palace of Prince Hordedef, and he will be provided with a thousand loaves of bread, a hundred jugs of beer, one ox and a hundred bunches of vegetables, and one did everything as his majesty had ordered. Did King Khufu ever make it to the chambers of thought? Do you think the king was able to transcend our mortal plane? Did his temporal incantations work and transport him 5,000 years into the future where those who have powers equal to Deddy's live? Type in the comments what you think happened to Khufu. If you are interested in knowing what scientifically proven technique was actually used to build the pyramids, check the description for a link. Join us and see how those who are said to be without history birthed civilization itself.